In every CCNA class I teach, I always suggest people build a home lab because it's a great way to learn Cisco concepts. So imagine my surprise when a month later, one of my students emailed me a picture of a 42U rack fully populated with Cisco gear, and in the text he said, Jeremy, I took out a student loan and followed your advice. Oh man, I gotta hone this down. Welcome to building a CCNA home lab, the micro nugget. Can I emphasize point number one? If you've taken out a, a loan for your home lab, you've gone too far. My number one goal with the CCNA home lab is cost effectiveness. I know a lot of you are on a shoestring budget and there's an amazing amount of stuff that you're able to do with a single router. I mean, take that to your house, connect that to your uh, DSL, cable modem, internet connection, whatever, you know, you've got your internal network over here. There's your uh, Nintendo Wii and your Xbox and whatever else you got running inside of your house. Uh, and there's so much that you're able to do. I mean, this one router you can start setting up things like NAT, uh, access control list, IP addresses, the base configuration. Uh, you can even get quality of service going. I mean, the, the, the sky's the limit of what you can do with that single router. Uh, and you add a little real world fun to it because if you mess up, you take down your whole family's internet connection, which nowadays is phone and television and everything else. So you've got your real world pressure on right there, right? So, so Cisco 871. That has been my recommendation for years and years and years. Why? Uh, because with this single box, uh, you get a built-in switch. Uh, you can even get it. Matter of fact, let me bust out eBay right here. Uh, I typed in Cisco 871W and I was like, hey, that, that's a perfect one. So for full wireless, and you can see it's got a little built-in four-port switch, WAN link, you know, that's where your internet connection goes, uh, 75 bucks. If, if you can deal without the wireless, I know, get up, walk around, that kind of thing, uh, you can you can grab one of these things for $24.99. I mean, there's just a lot you're able to do with one of those. That's always my prime recommendation. Uh, main point number Number two is it's small and it's quiet. Uh, this is the traditional lab equipment that I have down here, and it's awesome. I am not putting down those routers. They are great routers, but as you add more and more to those to your house, you start getting this thing that goes in the background all the time. You start going crazy in, in your house. So I am all about these guys because they are whisper quiet and you can sit them on a shelf. They don't take up a full uh, 19 inch you know, rack mount area uh, like this guy does. So Cisco 1721, 1750, same kind of things, but now you've got modules, m m modules inside of there to where you can add serial ports, ISDN interfaces. Now, big uh, challenge that you'll have here is this has just one ethernet port. You can buy an ethernet module so you can have a second ethernet port or you can get creative. I mean, take your Cisco 870, you know, maybe you got a 20 megabit per second internet circuit coming in. Take your uh, Cisco 1721, get a little serial port going to another 1721, and there's your home network, you know, because you don't have two uh, ethernet connections. And you reduce your 20 meg internet connection down to one, but you'll learn a lot. And that's the fun. Uh, this is the traditional one, Cisco uh, 2611, two Ethernet ports, 10 megabit per second. This is two Ethernet ports, 100 megabit per second. Again, cost savings on this side. XM is expandable. If you want to go into the CCNP, you'll probably want one of those because you can get more memory on them, thus run the more full, featurific iOS version. Okay, that's the single routers. If you just got one and done, go one of those guys. Minilab, I would suggest getting two of the 2950s and two of the either 2611 or 2621s uh, and call me in the morning. Seriously, that's that's all you need for a CCNA home lab. Estimated cost probably, it depends on your savvy shoppiness, maybe 150 bucks, maybe $200 to build, again, a, a, a lab where you can demonstrate and test just about everything that is covered in the CCNA. Uh, of course, don't forget your console cable, ethernet cable, serial cables, where to get those? Monoprice, of course, this this website that I've fallen in love with. If you type in Cisco in the search field, uh, they actually sell really cheap, really good Cisco serial cables uh, that you're able to get. These are uh, serial crossover cables, so you can uh, directly connect two individual routers and test your WAN connectivity, even simulate frame relay connections and all of that. If you got the cash, grab a Cisco 3550. Those are awesome. A little layer three love for you to where you can do layer three switching. Some of them even have power over the ethernet. Get your voice over IP thing going. But the biggest thing I can suggest is to grab a lab guide. There's no fun in buying a big old chunk of equipment and it sits there because you don't know what to do with it. Um, I created for CBT Nuggets a series called CCNA Labs. And in there, I created a whole bunch of labs that you can actually cable and assemble and do yourself. I'd suggest doing that or getting something that you're able to do. 
The last thing that I'll suggest is to buy wisely. Don't go buy a $500 router because, ooh, it does IPv6, and I heard there's IPv6 on the CCNA exam. Sure, but it's a fringe topic. There's like five commands, so you end up typing them in on the router, and you're like, man, that's, that's like 100 bucks a command just to type that in. That was not cost effective. Uh, so doing a lab the right way can really give you a good return on investment and really get you going into the Cisco world. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.